All right, well, now we get to apply all those wonderful 706 code sections to our system schematic, just like we did with Article 690. So in this case, we're looking at our AC coupled multimode system. And we have to start thinking now that we have it out in front of us and we have all those code requirements in our minds. Um, now we can start to see where we could apply them. And so we will see that, you know, things as to the product listing to 95, 4940A, you know, that's going to apply to the energy storage system here, energy storage, disconnect, multimode inverter potentially. Um, all those listing requirements we have to think about on these pieces of equipment. And then when we get into disconnecting means, installation requirements such as working space, um, all of those different little sections that we talked about now have to be applied to the, this exact system. So Let's talk about working space. So we want to make sure that you know our energy storage system has enough physical space around it. Should we need to service it? Um, and so we need to look at how we're physically spacing these pieces of equipment and where we're placing them on the wall in relation to each other, um, and so on. So working space will have to be applied. And then we have our circuit sizing. You know we have different circuits here. We have input circuits. Let's say if we have a battery bank that is separate from our multimode inverter and we have to size those circuits between the battery bank and the disconnect and between the, disc, the energy storage disconnect and the multimode inverter we have to make sure we're using the appropriate current that's going to flow on these lines on the input side of the um, inverter and then on the output side of the inverter we have a rated output here that we will utilize that we'll use to size these ac circuits with and then we're looking at our overcurrent protection as well. Um, whether it's on the DC side, it has to have the right DC ratings, or if it's on the AC side. And then there's the charge control requirements. And that's something I do want to bring up here, especially in an AC coupled multimode system. You know, we need to make sure under all circumstances that these batteries are protected from overcharge. So when the utility is operational, we have lots of places for this PV power to flow. It can flow into our backed up loads panel and feed those loads. It can come over here and charge batteries. Um, it can come and feed the main service panel and so on. Um, but once the grid goes down, we have less places for that PV power to flow. And let's say uh, it's the middle of the day and people aren't home. And so we're not actually using many loads in our backed up panel. So we have an outage in the middle of the day, and now we have a backed up loads panel that can be utilized for back, backed up circuits, but nobody's home. And let's say the batteries are already full. Well, we need a way to make sure that that energy storage doesn't get overcharged in a case like this. And so charge control needs to be considered in all cases. And so we want to make sure that our multimode inverter has a way of basically turning off this interactive inverter or throttling it back if those batteries are getting full. Um, so, and that's often done through something like a frequency shift and, uh, or maybe a more of a direct control. So those are the types of design considerations when you start um, AC coupling systems, making sure that um, in the event of an outage that these, these batteries don't get overcharged um, during an outage situation. The other thing we need to consider is our, our disconnect. You know, we spent a long time, not a long time, but um, I wanna point out, there's a lot of disconnects on this page. So when it comes to our disconnect requirements, well, that disconnect um, could be thought of in a couple of different ways, but really from my understanding, the intent of this code section on the disconnect being located outside the home is so that first responders that might be coming to your home um, in case of an emergency have a way of shutting down all the circuits in the home and de-energizing all the circuits in the home so they can safely do whatever they need to do. So that is a very important consideration because as I look at this diagram, I see one, two, three different disconnects shown. And I mean, never mind all the other circuit breakers and such. But so if we look at this disconnect, well, yeah, and the DC disconnect here would do the job. It would shut off the energy storage to the multimode inverter, effectively shutting it down. Because once this multimode inverter is down, it can't be backfeed any power into the backed up loads panel, which would automatically shut down the interactive inverter. And so there'd be no power to these backed up loads. Okay. Um, there's also the PV system disconnect. Well, that's required by Article 690, and that's also outside the home. 
and the interactive system disconnect. Well, that's a separate requirement we'll get into in 705. Um, but people get a little concerned about this one because if it has to be on the DC side, um, that can be tricky to accommodate in some installations. So we may have to take advantage of that or remote control language. Perhaps it's the remote control that we put outside and not the actual disconnect itself to accomplish that function. Now with a fully packaged ESS, okay, you may also be able to utilize say an AC um, disconnect on that output circuit that's feeding the backed up loads. I mean, remember if the goal is to shut down the circuits in the home, well then an AC output breaker or disconnect, actually a disconnect, because it has to be lockable open, um, might be able to do the trick as well. So these are the types of code requirements that we have to dive into. And to be honest, there's a little bit of confusion with the current version of the NEC and how to apply uh, the language that's given. But if you think about the true intent of, of why that code section is in there, um, you, you can come up with a way to satisfy it. And the last thing I'll bring up here is that voltage limitation, okay? So um, we need to keep in mind that these circuits can't be over 100 volts um, DC on the DC side for a dwelling unit um, unless they are not accessible during routine maintenance, okay? So we want to make sure that we're considering that code requirement about the DC voltage um, in our designs. And with our DC coupled system, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna apply that article 706 and understand that um, this various circuits have different currents that are, are being carried on them. We need to make sure that we are sizing those conductors appropriately with the appropriate currents uh, depending on what's happening and on the input side and on the output side of the inverter, over current protection ratings. If it's on the DC side, they need to be DC rated. Charge control requirements. We have an external charge control here in this particular DC coupled multimode system. And make sure that those settings are not accessible to unqualified persons. And all the same, um, we have the same requirements. Now we just might have to apply them in a slightly different location because we have different equipment that's arranged in a different configuration. So that disconnect, so now we have this interactive system disconnect that's on the top side, that's not really going to do the function or provide the functionality of the energy storage disconnect that we were talking about earlier for our emergency personnel. And so um, this is going to be a way to disconnect from the utility and, and segment our, our equipment for servicing, but it's not going to do anything for us if the first responders are trying to shut down the circuits to the home during um, like for our backed up loads panel. So once again, we're looking at this energy storage disconnect or it's remote being outside the home for one and two family dwellings. And again, we'll look at that voltage on the um, input side, on the DC side, keeping that under hundred volts unless um, no energized parts are accessible during routine maintenance, then we can go up, go up to 600 volts. And then with our standalone system, it's slightly less complicated because we don't have the utility we're dealing with here, um, but we still have all the same sections um, applying to our energy storage system. And so our overcurrent protection, our circuits, our disconnects, and the charge control requirements all still apply in the standalone setting as well. And so uh, for it doesn't really matter what kind of energy storage um, system you have or what kind of system you have, if, if energy storage is involved, then you need to apply all those sections that we discussed in Article 706 to the appropriate circuits and um, components.